Hello everyone. I hope you all are keeping well and healthy and staying safe. Um, and I hope that the last two episodes were useful in learning the initial start to post-processing your wildlife images. Um, I'm Rajiv Alikala and this is the third episode of Wild Exposure. And today I'll be talking about the rest of the editing process uh, in wildlife images. So to start off, I would import the images once again. So I've selected some photographs uh, from some of the raw files which I have. Unfortunately, I don't have a big collection at the moment because uh, as mentioned in la the last episode, uh, I had to leave behind my hard disk in office and uh, as we are under curfew, we are unable to uh, get a huge database. But uh, these are some of the raw images of a uh, few of the tours which I did uh, last year. Uh, and we'll use this for the post-processing process. Um, and uh, this is what I have handpicked from the photographs which I really want to uh, edit and which I really like because you have to be very selective in the type of images which you finally save in your hard disk. So uh, nobody has unlimited space. So we have to be very mindful uh, and mature in our decision. So I know when you're new to photography, you might be tempted to keep every single image which you click and uh, that is okay in the start, but as your hard disk keeps getting filled up, uh, you're gonna have trouble. So what I would advise is even before you transfer to your computer, uh, if you can select the images uh, in your camera itself and delete any unwanted images. Unwanted images can be uh, shots which are not too sharp, uh, which are in bad light and are very grainy or are not uh, aesthetically pleasing when it comes to the position or the movement of the certain subject or animal. Uh, it can be um, if the animal is in partial shadows and with contrasting sun like sunlight. So there are certain instances which uh, you know where the photographs become unusable. So uh, I would advise you to be very selective in the type of pictures you save. Uh, saying that, let's start off with uh, post-processing. So we have imported a collection of images from the fol folder which I have saved. And so we click on this on the leopard and we go to the de develop tab. So as mentioned uh, in the previous episode, we start by doing a crop. So it doesn't take much time. Let's crop it as you see fit. So what do you see in this image which you'd want to adjust? What? How did you see this in your own eyes? I would say definitely that this is ever slightly overexposed overexposed means there's too much brightness in the image so we have to reduce the brightness so if you take this bar here there are so many tools to tweak and adjust the image and one of the first ones which comes into your eyes is uh, exposure so this is basically brightness for in, in layman terms so as you see if you can in, you increase this this goes way out of uh, out of proportion and if you reduce it also, it's, it doesn't uh, do any justice. So you slightly, you, you gauge with your own eyes what is the suitable level of brightness. For me, it's around this much. Okay. And then we move to the contrast dial. Contrast is actually... Uh, a tool which you use to differentiate the main subject, separate the main subject from the background. And it just contrasts on the color as well as the tone. So as you can see, otherwise if the contrast is low, it doesn't stand out. So to make it stand out, but you don't, don't overdo it like this. Keep it at a decent level. Okay. 
I do not uh, need to play around with the highlight shadows or any of the other dials. I would increase a little bit of the clarity, which increases some of the detail if you go uh, if you go here, zoom in, you can see the difference. These are micro contrasts between pixels, the contrast between the pixels, which actually increase a little bit of the sharpness, as you can see. And uh, overall, slightly increase the vibrance and saturation, but especially be careful when using these two tools uh, in wildlife photography you use it very minimally you never overuse it because it can look very artificial if it's done like this for example have a look even this it's just overdone it's i know it looks vibrant and it looks fancy but it doesn't look natural it has to look as natural as possible so just keep it at a decent modest level so you take the measure and the plus 10 would be fine so be mindful of that if you feel that you need to add a little bit of sharp more sharpness you can go down there's a area called sharpening so you can don't do it too don't overdo it but you can increase it slightly okay right i think this image is good to be uh, saved as a jpeg so you go to file you go to export and in export you need to select the folder so you can go to the main folder where the raw files are select that and then create a subfolder maybe called final photographs for example and a few other details at the bottom okay uh, the file settings so you can select the type of file you want to save it as so i have selected jpeg color spacing you can put any of uh, it doesn't it's only for printing which re it really matters but uh, i usually just keep it at pro photo rgb and uh, in case you want to say uh, save it as a small file size you can you can uh, do that but of course here i'm going to keep the maximum file size and maximum con quality no other changes other than the watermark so basically i have i have a watermark saying rajiv valley color but uh, if you want to create one there'll be options saying edit watermarks it opens up to this window you can type whatever your whatever you want to type whether it's your name or any any type of watermark you want and i would recommend it on the right hand corner or the left hand corner so you can select the font the type of font everything here and uh, select the position of the of the watermark and just select done and once everything is okay so if you have already created a watermark you just click this and it automatically adds adds the certain watermark which you have saved so once you're done you just click export and it gets saved as a jpeg so moving on, just quickly crop this leopard. So in the cropping uh, episode, we talked about leaving space. So I'm just not going to repeat that. So hopefully um, that's clear. We leave a bit of space when the leopard or animal is turned towards a certain side. Uh, I would reduce the light slightly increase the core contrast little bit of the clarity slightly increase the vibrance not too much okay the sharpness is quite good but we'll just increase a bit of the sharpness just to get, get add some more detail okay then uh, if you want to save this file in the same folder which you saved the previous file in you don't need to go again and select everything manually just say export with previous and it gets saved okay moving on so in the cropping exercise we cropped only the tusks of the elephant 
so it's a bit like that the light is a bit harsh here uh, it's a bit overexposed so I would reduce it a little bit as you can see increase the contrast nothing much it's not uh, that much of a special image but you know can do what you can uh, a little bit of the sharpness maybe a bit too much okay we this is the maximum you can get out of this image so save it as export with previous um, as a shortcut as well if you want control alt shift any but I just prefer to go to the file and just save it like that okay So this is the way I like to crop it with a bit of the background. Um, sounds a bit harsh, so yep, a little bit like that. A little bit on the contrast. Increase the clarity a bit. Slightly on saturation to the sharpness and yep it's good to go if you want to create a monochrome or a black and white image you can switch to black and white on the top here and also um, white balancing um, it's how the white is perceived in uh, the image and um, sometimes when a camera may not be able to read as well as the eye or accurately as the eye so if you feel that you need to change you need to add a bit of warmth into the image you can do do that but in this case it's it's fine the way it is and just export in this image uh, the wild dog uh, this was photographed in Kabini uh, this wild dog is uh, in a bit of the shadows and you can see there's this the grassy area at the bottom uh, is more lit up so it's a bit tricky uh, because it's a bit distracting in my opinion and uh, therefore because this dog and the background is in the shadows what I would do is I first crop it and a few things you can do for one is this is something we not highly recommended generally but uh, if you need if you have to do it uh, I would say just uh, go to sorry I, I missed that um, so basically there's a brush adjustment brush here click that and then you can brush a certain effect on only an area which you want to but you cannot overdo it and make it look artificial some I've seen uh, some people overdo this and the pictures look extremely artificial especially because you see the contrast in the areas where you have adjusted and the areas you haven't so it has to be done very carefully so I would reduce the exposure a little bit uh, shadows I just reduce a little bit and just you have to test it out and see if it works out you don't overdo it so you apply the brush manually okay see if you reduce exposure it comes out much better so if you want to undo it just press ctrl z you can undo whatever any stroke which you have done uh, that looks a bit even right and then if you want to say slightly increase the brightness of the dog itself a little bit slightly very slightly you can because i feel that the shadow is in the face so you can very slightly adjust it don't overdo it if you overdo it it will be seen okay 
think it's done. Now, now what I do is overall exposure or brightness I reduce. So it doesn't really affect the dog. And if you want to increase the brightness of an area which you highlighted, you can slowly increase it ever so slightly. And then I feel there's very little contrast here. So increase the contrast. Uh, then overall shadows you can you can use the cap the the dial uh, the bar uh, for shadows and just increase it so that overall shadows are, are removed i'm just going to reduce the blacks a little okay let's move down clarity a little bit is it sharp yes very sharp little bit of the saturation and the vibrance and saturation feel that I can amend some bit of the temperature to see this looks much more natural and this is what I actually saw with my own eyes see the difference before oops uh, I think I undid this as well okay wait. okay see how it changes doesn't it look much better with this just increase the temperature here this is the first dial you find on this bar i don't think you need to increase any more the sharpness it's sharp enough so we save it moving on as you can see there's a bit of harsh light on the face of the dog I like the bit of shadow on the side of the face, but uh, needs to be first cropped and, and adjusted. Let's see how we can do that. I like to crop it like this, as mentioned in the previous episode. Um, let's see how we can. Oh, it looks lovely. Increase the contrast. Bit of the temperature. See, works so well with the color of the dog think I like that a bit brings out the image a bit slightly on this saturation and amazing if you want to go even further little bit on the sharpness and we are done I like that there's a partial shadow here uh, I think it brings a bit of an effect, but if you want, you can reduce it. But I think I like this effect. Okay, I'm going to save it. Okay, so this photograph was taken quite late in the evening at around 6, 6.30. And I was using a 400 millimeter lens with a 2.8 aperture. That means I'm able to take uh, this photograph even during low light uh, with an average shutter speed. A lot of the other cameras in the group which I was with uh, were not able to take this picture because of the low light. Uh, there was a lot of uh, shutter speed. Uh, there was, uh, the shutter speed could not be uh, uh, taken up to a decent level. So I was one of the few who were able to take a picture here uh, but the only thing is even if your shutter speed is fast enough and the image is sharp enough uh, if you look at the color it's it's not as vibrant and uh, uh, you know warm as a normal daylight shot would look so this was quite late it looks almost it has a bluish to a tone to it firstly we will crop it uh, taking out the tree okay here you go and then I would increase the temperature slightly just but then I feel that you did increase the contrast a bit just so that the image stands out as you can see just pops out 
from the background. Maybe a bit of the blacks to bring more effect. Just reduce the blacks a little. Okay. Bit of the clarity. Very sharp image. Slightly on the vibrance and uh, saturation. We can tweak a bit of the sharpness here. As you can see, it's a bit grainy here because the ISO is at 2000. So there's an option called noise reduction where you can reduce some of the graininess. As you can see, if you dial it really high, you can reduce it completely, but I will just leave it here because you lose a bit of detail when you do that. And there's an area called detail where you can still add in a bit of detail. But don't overdo this because if you overdo it, I'll just show you. If you overdo this, this is going to look almost, the, the detail is going to look almost artificial. So... I would recommend using this sparingly and not overdoing it. Okay, I think, oops, I think we are good to save. Okay, looks good. Moving on to the Rhino here. We need to straighten this picture. And I need to decide whether I'm going to keep this egret or not. I think I'm going to take it out because the egret will be so bright and white. It's going to distract from the rhino. So when you straighten it, there's enough room to crop it out. As you can see, the light is very harsh. So this was taken uh, in the afternoon at around two o'clock. So what you do is you can firstly reduce the exposure a bit and increase the contrast. You can reduce the highlights as well, but not too much, slightly. Uh, add in a bit of the blacks. Uh, you just tone it down a bit, okay. Um, go up on the clarity, vibrance, not too much. Uh, think it increase the exposure a little bit. Okay, this looks okay. It's not an ideal image. I'm not, you know, my favorite Rhino image, but. For the sake of editing, I'll just do it. Just increase the sharpness. That's fine. So let's export that. So this is a photograph of Rhino on the move. Uh, the, this one and as well as the previous were taken at Kaziranga National Park in India. So as you can see, there's a trail of dust at the back. So we'd like to have that as part of the image, just to bring in a bit of action. So, leave a bit of room in front, more proportionate to the front than the back, but you need to leave a bit of the dust at the back, just for effect. Okay, let's see how it comes out. Okay, looks nice. Um, it's a bit too bright for my liking. Increase the contrast. And should I increase the temperature a bit, a little bit is fine here. Yeah? Okay. Be very sparing in a lot of the dials which are using. Increase some of the blacks. Just makes the image pop up a little bit more. 
clarity slide I, let's see the sharpness so it's not that sharp but it's good up to that level think please more sharpness down here okay it's as good as it can get uh, as mentioned I'm going to use this as a portrait so I'm going to crop it from here can increase the contrast clarity the vibrance so saturation slightly um, the exposure is fine so I'm not going to touch that bit on the sharpening right so we save that this is one of my favorite images from the trip so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it like this oh, no. maybe crop it in a way where it looks like the rhino is walking towards me straighten it a bit that's perfect maybe a little bit like that okay contrast exposure is fine I'm not going to touch that it's going to be as it is uh, bit of the blacks clarity see how sharp it is it's nice vibrance slightly saturation ever so slightly then overall sharpness that's it simple looks great so the key to all of this is to use your settings sparingly and not overdo it so as with the previous session I'm going to crop it like this so don't be afraid to use different shapes in your framing so I like this frame and the light looks perfect so I'm not going to touch the exposure increase the contrast a bit not to overdo it okay maybe a bit of clarity don't touch too much of the vibrance because the light is already good so you don't need to worry too much about it uh, just bring just in, tweak it a little bit so that you bring out the clarity uh, sorry not the clarity there bring out the colors hidden in the photograph sorry about that uh, and the sharpening so this was taken slightly high ISO okay. it's fine don't think you need to worry too much about the graininess uh, this this is fine um, if you like we can cut a bit on the shadows of this ele the young elephant here yes this looks great you so you center on this two young calves looks fine looks great so save that so this was a Rambo Selly in Kenya and these flamingos let's try and crop it straighten out like this and uh, right um, here you can reduce the con the uh, the exposure sorry the exposure slightly and increase the contrast just to bring out the image uh, I wouldn't recommend uh, doing much on the I increase a bit on the clarity but 
best to not touch too much on the saturation because the colors are already quite quite nice and uh, so these as mentioned uh, some of the ter terminology which i use is not very technical it's just uh, what i do and what i feel i like in my images so this uh, i'm just sharing the knowledge on uh, my my experience and how i do it so maybe uh, it's not the most technical so or by the book but this is just how i edit uh, and post process my images so yeah it's a bit grainy as you can see so you can go to noise reduction increase that then you lose a bit of detail okay just increase the detail as well in this instance you can play around a bit because especially what i noticed is with feathers it's not that much of an effect uh, is not much of an issue uh, it's made with fur where you can see the thing uh, when you increase the noise reduction too much okay looks good and i'm saving it okay moving on to the lesser flamingos so leave the reflection as well try to reduce the green on top you can reduce it. you can do it completely without the flamingos in the background but i think it looks nice to use them what do you think okay like that yes so reduce the exposure a little bit because it is a bit overexposed increase the contrast it on the vibrance saturation these are actually very pink flamingos so these are lesser flamingos they are different from the greater flamingo which i edited earlier they're much smaller these are greater flamingos in the background then the, the lesser flamingos are much more pink in color so if we're increasing the sharpening the grain is going to be the graininess is going to be quite high so can increase on the rise reduction and increase on the detail okay looks good export so we've got a few more left so you have the cheetah here so the cheetah is the star of the image so you remove the background uh, the white sky in the background straighten it and keep it at the bottom center increase a bit on the exposure it's too much this looks fine increase the contrast clarity looks very nice ever so slightly on the vibrance and saturation maybe you don't need to do it like, uh, maybe keep the saturation at zero on the sharpening let's see how it is oh, extremely sharp perfect if you get the image right you don't need to tweak it too much so moving on to the jackal uh, like mentioned in the previous episode um, i'm going to do a bit of a portrait crop here center bit on the top Okay, and I'm going to keep it the exposure maybe as it is. Increase the contrast slightly to bring out the image and separate the image from the background. Increase on the clarity, vibrance and saturation very slightly. Maybe too much saturation, just reduce this. 
okay and how sharp is the image it's very sharp maybe add a little bit more and how grainy is the image not that bad so we save it okay so this this kind of image is this was taken in Tadoba in India it's a backlit image I love images where we can light up the from the back so what a backlit image is is where the sun is coming from the back and hitting the grass and the subject and see see the grass is glowing uh, almost golden in color because it's hit from the back uh, from behind and uh, basically the sun is facing us so uh, this is ideal in the morning or in the late evening uh, so it gives a beautiful effect so what I'm going to do is make use of it I first crop it the monkey the gray langa is walking forward so crop it in a way that okay and I'm going to reduce the exposure because to get that proper backlit effect so reduce the exposure increase the contrast see from here brings a golden tone when you increase the contrast not too much right just right it's a little bit on the clarity not a lot slightly on the saturation if you do too much it's going to be unnatural so it needs to be accurate to what you saw uh, in principle just a little bit on the sharpness but anyway it's a backlit image so you're not going to get a lot of detail because the, the side which is facing you is actually in the shadows um, but you get the bright almost halo like ring around the animal so this is fine so I'm going to save it this is another backlit image the same sequence so I crop it I have used the focusing points in the camera to focus on to frame the monkey on the side so that it's easy for me what I would do is I would keep him on the upper upper segment of the frame uh, maybe let me just see okay keep it like that because I want more focus on the grass rather than the background I'm going to reduce too much of the exposure I've already done that on the camera the clarity here let's see how we can increase the saturation a bit beautiful so it gives such a golden effect to the whole scenario maybe if you want to if you want the langer in more more shadows you can increase that yes perfect it looks as absolutely stunning and uh, exactly the way I want it so with the golden grass and beautiful gray langer seated there save that another favorite image of mine from my trip in to Tadoba so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a portrait and not use the whole body of the tiger as the young tiger we saw on our final day here you go so as you can see it's a bit overexposed so you have to adjust the exposure so reduce the exposure increase the contrast 
increase the clarity go easy on the you know do you using uh, saturation and vibrance on tigers just go easy on it because if the slightest increase can uh, make it look unnatural so it's just very slightly I put just plus two on the saturation it's very sharp if you want to go show off a bit increase it a little bit more done I think uh, nothing more to say just export okay so in this image um, I like the fact that the tigers in the grass what I don't like is the fact that the tigers in the shadows and the grass in the background is in golden light and it's not ideal because the grass uh, is distracting somebody who's viewing the image from the tiger it's there's not much you can do because it's a natural setting and uh, you have to take what you can but to make the most of it let's first go to the adjustment brush and in this brush you go to shadows increase the shadows part a little bit little bit on the exposure uh, is the brush big enough it's a bit too big you can change the size of the brush as you can see and show you size of the brush can be increased or decrease I'm going to decrease it a bit let's try it and see uh, I'm going to undo it it's a bit too much just use it on this side of the face and the body thing is if you do it too much you can see the edges where you have adjusted contrasting to the rest so now that you have already applied this to the grass we need to adjust it to this part of the grass as well it's a bit of a mess don't get too excited i'm going to adjust it i'll show you oops undo that part I'll do it again okay let's see it's all about trial and error and you know if it works or not okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to forget about the grass i'm just going to do Control z undo undo again okay just focus on the tiger okay now see the image of the tiger looks very flat because of what I did so increase the contrast right first I forgot let's crop this crop it this way a bit of the top cut as much of the bright grass as possible keep it like that okay um let's see overall reduction on the exposure so if you want to reduce a bit of the brightness on the back just reduce a bit of the highlights increase some of the blacks overall exposure just increase like that so i just do few changes here and there i just keep looking at the image keep judging what I need to do uh, so just feel free to do that but just keep looking at the image and seeing how natural it is I feel there's a bit of a green tone in this image which I want to reduce so increase it on the temperature get a more golden effect I think I'm not going to touch the saturation on the vibrant sorry the vibrance I'm going to just reduce it and let's see the sharpness okay okay 
so it's the best I can do with the given situation so let's save it okay the next sequence of images I got this big male tiger known as Mat Kasur who is marking his territory it's not too sharp because okay this looks nice as you can see I like the way this shot was taken because uh, the back I like the fact that there's a lot of background as well a lot of these these are teak young teak trees but it just brings a bit of effect to the photograph so I think this was taken a bit uh, late in the evening so there's the light is a bit low just increase it slightly increase the contrast clarity I like the greenery of the whole thing slightly on the saturation but not too much increase on the sharpness I need a bit of sharpness here and slightly on the noise reduction looks fine great I love this image okay save and there's a bit more on the sequence um, so out of these two images which one do you like personally I like the one where it's looking straight at me so that's what I'm going to use so you have to be very picky in what you choose you don't uh, I would advise even if you post process two three images which look similar uh, don't publish more than one of the same sequence because end of the day you have to show that you know how to judge a good image and uh, you know that you are able to choose the best out of any sequence rather than putting uh, several of the same in one uh, exhibition or one book or one one upload because it just uh, it becomes quite boring and uh, uh, people you know for the persons uh, or people who are viewing it so here in this case I would I keep the exposure as it is maybe slightly increase increase the contrast I want to add in a bit of the blacks here use some of the shadows let's see what will happen if I Okay, just increase a little bit on the temperature, not a lot, slightly. Okay, so just another thing I want to tell when uh, going through the edit. So let's just finish this first. Uh, sharpness. Okay. Right. So let's say this first. Export with previous. So say that you have done certain adjustments here as you can see for this image and say you want to apply the same thing for one image on the same sequence or like you have about four or five of the same sequence in the same area. So the adjustment generally would be the same because the light, the tone, everything usually is the same. So if this is just a you know, easy, quick and easy uh, technique which I use to save time. So what I do is I save the settings in what they call presets on the side there's something called presets here you click the plus button and you say male tiger or something and this so all the all the areas which you have adjusted get saved so now for example if you go here this image you want to add the same settings except the crop the crop you have to do it yourself but Besides this, male tiger, done, see, and then save it, simple. So out of these three images of the tiger walking, ideally I would have liked to have the tiger looking straight at me, but it's not. So which one would you choose? I would choose this because the paw is in front and this makes it a bit more interesting. Now the crop here can be done like this 
or leave a bit of space here assuming oops sorry and it's coming towards you just gives a bit of effect okay and this is just the way I would take it and you can use the male tiger format I think in addition to that I do a bit of tweaking here uh, okay let's increase a bit of that a uh, bit of the exposure I think it's still I think the exposure was a bit too much just keep it like this um, yeah there's nothing much else you can do sharpness is fine exported previous they not a very good image uh, on the sharpness side but uh, let's take it as a portrait I'm not going to crop this at all so you can use the earlier setting feel you want to increase the brightness a bit you can it's not the most sharp sharpest image but just for our session we'll use it as an example uh, there were several other raw images i just selected this randomly uh, okay so we are done so let's see what we have saved open the file Final photographs. Okay, let's have a look. Takes a bit of time. Um, right. Okay. Beautiful. So, as you see, I have uh, these are the final images after the post processing is done it takes some time to load so this we did the best we can with this but i'm happy with it uh, love the backgrounds the because i always try not to zoom in too much on the animal or get too close because leave a bit of space uh, because that gives you enough room to do uh, certain you know artistic uh, crops uh, which bring out the background of the animal or uh, the habitat where it lives in this even this shot you know it shows so much of where the animal lives uh, the background and uh, you when you zoom back you have enough of a frame to do cropping later on once you're back home because if you try to get be too ambitious on the crops while you're in the field uh, you might lose out on some opportunities so if you're uh, if you can always keep some space and take more wider angles of animals rather than close crop so you can do more with what you can what you have taken so you can see it's fine it's amazing Perfect. Nice. I really like this image. Lesser flamingos, the cheetah, I mean a laugh, and the jackal okay so i hope you learned something today uh, and on the final touches uh, you need to do and how to save the images in a file um, so this would be uh, main areas in lightroom which i like to highlight but i would uh, be covering certain other areas uh, in managing your photographs and uh, archiving them uh, and how to uh, choose and uh, sort out your images in the next few episodes so 
uh, i hope that you learned something please uh, uh, hit the like button and uh, also uh, please leave your comments uh, and also please inbox me if you have any questions i'm here to help you i'm more than happy to be of assistance and uh, please stay tuned uh, this is rajiv signing out from wild exposure stay tuned for more updates bye